I would like to talk a little bit about electrical safety, um, particularly the sort of uh, everyday items you get in your house, such as extension leads, such as this, that you don't really think twice about. Uh, this was a three meter extension lead I bought in an Irish store called Home Store and More. Uh, they sell bed linen, table lamps, curtains, just household stuff in general. Um, it was five euros or something like that, not very expensive, but that kind of an average price for an item such as this. So it wasn't particularly cheap, wasn't particularly expensive. Um, one day I had it plugged into a halogen heater, which um, wasn't drawing a huge amount of power. Uh, it was actually only drawing 500 watts. I know that because I used this watt meter to test it. So, so by rights, 500 watts on a three meter extension, it shouldn't really be that much of a load. Um, but then I noticed a horrible burning plastic smell, which, as you can see there, actually uh, burnt a hole, well, melted a hole through the plug here. So that was slightly concerning. So what I'm going to do today is actually take this apart, have a look at it and see what's good about it and what's bad about it. Um, so to start off with, I am going to start by taking apart the actual plug. And then I'll, sorry, the socket, and then eventually I will move on to the plug. Uh, the plug is made out of a fairly tacky, flexible plastic. It's not the sort of, you can see here there's a bit of a gap in the, the casing. Uh, generally expect these sort of things to be made out of a better quality, tougher plastic. Um, something that doesn't melt as easily, so to speak. So I'm just going to take it apart here. Um, I apologize for the weird color on the video. My camera was doing some sort of weird auto uh, contrast correction stuff anyway, but um, it doesn't really take away too much from the video. Um, you can The screws are nasty. They're that kind of soft metal that if you put too much pressure on them, you start to get those little shards of metal that uh, start to prick you. Anyway, um, this one was proving a bit of a challenge to pull out. Oh yeah, the brand name is Stylextric, which is Home Store Moore's uh, own brand. That's why I was looking at it there. Uh, let's open it up. Um, you know, not really too impressed with that. Uh, first of all, the actual uh, contacts that the pins go into look a bit weak. Um... I would generally expect those to have a bit more clamp on them. Uh, some would actually uh, have a sort of funnel effect on them that as the deeper down you go, the, the closer in the contacts go so that they grip harder. These are a kind of a U-shape that um, over time is probably going to lose tension. And the problem is if you lose tension on the earth, then you still have the live and neutral. Or, okay, the live could lose tension or the neutral could lose tension, but it's possible that the... Um, the uh, earth could lose tension and then you'd have an unearthed circuit. Secondly, it's the, the length of the, the cord kind of bothers me. Generally, the earth should be shorter than the neutral and the neutral should be shorter than the live. So if there's anything pulls on it, the live gets pulled out first and then the neutral. So earth will always remain to the end. So I'm doing noise. I'm actually uh, unscrewing everything to compare the lengths. Also worth noting is the, the, the cord tension. It's just, it's not very good. Just the, the, the single... Uh, cord tensioning collar uh, isn't really providing strain as, as much strain relief as I would like and also generally extension cords would uh, have a rubber um, uh, guide that would prevent wear and tear on the, the cord as it goes into the plug um, this one doesn't so over time this is going to wear out and fall apart so I'm taking, a, taking off the, uh, the cord clamp here Trying to find the right screwdriver to do it. Um, I thought I could just pull it out there, but I couldn't. So I have to go back and try again. So let's see what we have here. So I'm pulling off all the terminals. And as you can see, The live is slightly longer than the neutral, which is slightly longer than the, the earth, which is not what you want, really. You want the earth to be the longest. Um, 
Yeah, so I'm not really pleased with that. Now, to be honest with you, how serious is it? Well, it all depends. If if you leave the plug sitting there and you never move it around, you're never going to have an issue. If you've got, if it's attached to or a single plug like this, you might be pulling it and moving it around a lot, and that could cause problems. And eventually, someone's going to disconnect, and uh, hopefully, it's you know, disconnect in a non bad way. Ideally, you want the 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 plug the cord to come in from the this end, so that uh, or even from the side where you know, there's proper uh, tensioning of the cord and the cord lengths have been cut correctly so that you know, earth will always be the last one that connects um, should anything be pulled out. Uh, it's it's not nice. It's not nice. It's not hugely terrible, but I it's, it's a sign of cheapness and they've cut corners in the design and they're trying to make it as cheap as possible. So we're going to have a quick look at the uh, at the shutters and the plug. Um, sorry for taking this out of shot. Uh, the shot the, they appeared to work fine. Um, I did manage to get the screwdriver to pull down the shutters once, as you can see here. Uh, that should no, you shouldn't really be able to do that. The actual shutter should completely uh, cover the hole with a with a bit to spare. So there should no, there shouldn't be like a mic a really thin gap that you can get like a thin bladed screwdriver through. If you look at a, you know, a standard plug that is good, a socket that is good quality, you can't do that, even if you push in really hard. So, yeah, I'm, I'm disappointed by this plug. Um, it's cheap and nasty. But then again, there are worse out there. Um, but with electrical safety, you can't really mess around. So anyway, now I am going to look at the plug. Uh, take it apart. Now a lot of uh, well, UK plugs, when you buy the plug or when you buy an appliance with a plug, will have this little chart on showing you uh, how to wire up the plug. And it makes it quite clear that the lengths of the wires should be different. So it starts off with uh, 18 mils for the live, uh, 22 for the neutral and 38 for the earth. Uh, it says here 5 amp fuse, which is very unusual because uh, I think now the standards is you only use 3 or 13. But we'll see what's inside. Uh <clears throat> It's actually melted together. I can't actually open it here, even though I've taken the screw out. So I'm going to have to get the screwdriver and wedge the thing apart. <clears throat> Again, the, the material feels really cheap and tacky, like the plug, the, the socket. Uh, it's flexible. It's... Not like the nice solid rubber or pl hard plastic ABS plugs you normally get. There we go. Pulled it apart. Ooh, does not look good inside, does it? <laughs> a bit of burning there. <clears throat> um, yeah, that could have turned nasty. No, that's not what you want. Uh, so let's pull the fuse out. Now the fuse uh, looks brown. And brown would be 13 amp. But it says here 5 amp, because a 5 amp fuse would be black. So something's not right there. It is, I can't really, there's no lettering on it. It seems, to, I don't know if it burnt off, which in itself shouldn't happen. Uh, when a fuse blows, it shouldn't be blow with such heat or that it would uh, obliterate the lettering. But it looks brown, so to me that would be a 13 amp fuse, which would be fine for an extension lead. Um... So I'm going to open it up and see what's inside using a pair of pliers. A few of the fuse has gone everywhere, so it's over the half the fuse has gone to the back of my bench and I'm not going to find it. But looking at this, uh, there was sand in it. The wire, the fuse wire inside did appear to be connected to the middle of the end cap, which is where it's supposed to be connected. Some cheap fuses would uh, fold the wire around the uh, outside of the ceramic casing and then push the cap on, which is what shouldn't happen. Um, so yeah, uh, chances are the fuse was just... Uh, the wrong kind of wire that's what i think has happened here it was just mislabeled and or it was faulty in some way so looking inside the plug in a bit more detail it's pretty nasty as you can see um a lot of burn, no, potential potential fire hazards uh i actually did after this video was recorded go out and try and set fire to the plug and the sockets 
uh, using a blowtorch and it caught fire for a second or two and then it would put itself out so there is some sort of flame retardant chemical in the composition uh that being said though if the plug melts due to the faulty fuse and a a bit of plastic falls down from the plug and it's only flaming for a second that's all you need for a fire to take hold if it lands on something flammable so you know um the fact that the the plastic can catch fire for a second or two is pretty poor at the end of this video i'll show you some of that video that, uh, i'll splice in some of the video i took from outside showing the fire and my attempts to set fire to the plug in the socket <laughs> um but yeah all in all i'm i'm very unimpressed uh for a store like home store where to be selling something like this uh, i don't know if they're still selling it i would hope someone else has had a similar issue and told them and they've pulled it off pulled it off the shelf um i'm no massive expert on a uh, BS 1363 standard which these are supposed to comply with um, but I can tell you now that this is not meant to happen if the plug is overloaded the fuse should break without any obvious external happenings like this um, of course the exception is this if you uh, are using too big a fuse so if you're using a 13 amp fuse um, and overload it then that potentially could happen Another concern is the fact that the fuse melted a hole in the side of the plug means someone could grab the plug and be exposed to the live terminal, which is quite worrying. So here we are out in the barbecue, the old barbecue that should be thrown out, and I am attempting to set fire to the plug on the socket using a sort of handheld blowtorch kind of thingy, which I use for soldering. So here we go, let's see what happens. Yeah, I know there's no sound from the fire because my video camera's being weird. Uh, as you can see, it sort of catches fire for a second or two and then goes out. Um, and also melts quite easily. Um, generally, sort of the plastic you're finding in quality plugs is... Uh, if it's rubber, it'll be a very rubber of a high temperature resistance. And it, more than likely, the plug is made out of a sort of... Um, a substance which I'm not quite sure what it's called, but if you were to hit it with a hammer, it would disintegrate into a kind of shards, almost like glass. It's, it's very fire resistant and heat resistant. Um, but yeah, as you can see here, it's catching set of light for a second or two and then going out. Then again, the problem there is if um, if a drop of plastic drips off and that's flaming, then it lands on something that could catch fire. You got a problem. So yeah. Uh, Per show from Home Store and more there. Okay, bye bye.